know what you're thinking. Another camera? Insta360 is crazy active on the market this year and this is their latest creation, the X3, the successor of one of my absolute favorite cameras ever, the One X2. Now they've dropped the one from the name to make it a little bit easier to pronounce and this is now the Insta360 X3. I've been using this camera for the past couple of weeks and in today's video I'll share my impressions and all the features and new improvements that have been added to this new model and whether you should buy one. So obviously the first thing we need to address is the huge display that comes on the camera. This is a 2.29 inch display that takes most of the space when it comes to the front part of the camera. And then of course we have one of the lenses and on the back we have the other lens and just the name here. Now on the side of the camera we have a microphone, we have a power button and then a Q button. And this Q button is actually really cool. You have some predefined profiles that you can quickly access. And when you press the Q button, you will quickly change to the next one. This is really cool and it will enable you to quickly go through all the different things that you can use this camera for and just start shooting straight away. So I have already set up mine and I use them all the time because this is not just a 360 camera anymore. It's actually a little bit more than that, but we'll get to that in a second. On the other side of the camera, you have this little USB-C port for charging and also for transferring the footage to your computer, as well as the battery, which you can remove to access the SD card slot, which is right here. On the front, you have these two buttons right here. So this one is to change from outer to inner uh, lens. So this will quickly change and you can kind of vlog like this so you can easily see what the other lens is seeing before actually starting to record and you can start record by clicking on this button right here i don't have an sd card right now so yeah i won't be able to start recording but this is where you need to press if you want to start recording and that's pretty much it very basic but simple and useful layout of the camera just a few buttons on the front and on the side and of course on the bottom you have the thread for mounting accessories all sorts of different accessories that work with this camera but i assume the number one accessory that you will be using is the invisible selfie stick i really love how simple it is to extend it to its maximum length and then put it back together and this is how the setup looks. Let me show you something else that I got in the package from Insta360. This right here is an invisible selfie stick that is three meters long. I'm literally on the other side of the room. And this is fully extended now. Crazy. Now let's talk about the camera because obviously you would like to know what makes this an upgrade compared to the One X2. What makes this unique? And first of all, the new sensor this camera has is a half an inch sensor. Now you'll have the chance to produce better looking crisper image with these two lenses right here. The camera still shoots in 5.7K 360 video with active HDR if you really want to take advantage of all the dynamic range this camera has to offer. You have 72 megapixel 360 photos on this camera. And one of the things I'm mostly excited about, a 4K single lens mode. This means that you can disable one of the lenses and use this camera as an action camera, for example. So now when you go into the settings of the camera, you have two different sections that you can choose between. 360 or single lens. When you're in 360 mode, you have regular 360, you have active HDR, you have time lapse, time shift, bullet time, loop recording, star lapse, burst, interval, HDR photo, and regular photo. So many different modes that you can choose between, and that's not even the end. When you switch to single lens, you have regular video, you have me mode, which we'll talk about in a second, you have loop recording, you have photo, and then you're back to video. So all sorts of different modes to make this camera work whatever you want to use it for. I just mentioned me mode, which is a really cool single lens video mode from this camera. And I want to not only talk about it, but also demonstrate it. So let's check it out. That I really like on this X3 camera is the me mode. It's limited to 1080p, 60 frames per second, as it only uses one of the lenses. But when entering me mode, you will be automatically centered in the middle of the screen because actually the end of the selfie stick will be kept in the center of the footage at all times. So it completely eliminates the need to reframe the shot. So wherever you turn, you will always be in the middle of the shot, which is really convenient for some situations where 
you don't really want to uh, reframe the shot afterwards in post and this will really save you some time and I think it's a neat feature. All of your options and settings are really streamlined and I love the new interface Insta360 has done on this camera. So the only thing you need to do is swipe from the top, swipe from the left, swipe from the right or press on one of the icons right here on the bottom to change the settings that you want to tweak. For example, changing your frame rate or resolution happens really, really quickly uh, in a couple of seconds and you feel a little bit of a haptic feedback from the camera itself, which is a little touch that I definitely appreciate as a very satisfying feeling to, to change your settings and feel like you are doing something on the camera because of that little haptic feedback that normally you don't have on these cameras. Now obviously 360 cameras are not for everyone but I personally am a huge fan of them mostly because of that feature of having a completely invisible selfie stick attached to the camera meaning that you can really create some amazing looking shots without ever thinking about the perspective, the angle, um, you just have to, to enjoy the moment and then you can go back home, put the footage on your computer and then start actually picking what perspective you want to choose for your footage. Or if you don't want to deal with that, you can use the app that Insta360 has for automatic editing of your footage, which is now even more advanced compared to what it was before. The AI uh, that Insta360 uses to uh, automatically stitch your footage and edit it for you uh, is really, really come a long way. So I'm a big fan of that, even though, as you guys know me, I prefer to edit my footage myself, but I still open the app every now and then and I use some of those pre-made filters or pre-made how to call it, projects uh, that the app has to offer to edit the footage on the go and you can always trim or crop your footage you can use different aspect ratios like 16 by 9 and then 9 by 16 if you want to use it for a reel for example or a TikTok uh, video you can use that but also you can use the same footage and post it on YouTube in 16 by 9 which is something that I definitely like when it comes to uh, having the freedom to frame your footage the way you want it to look because of that aspect ratio and those possibilities that otherwise are not as easy to come by when you use a traditional camera sometimes you have to shoot something twice once in a horizontal uh, orientation one once in a vertical orientation but this right here offers you the chance to just shoot it once and then you can decide what you want to do with it and where you want to post that so like i said in the beginning of the video i am really excited about a very simple feature and that is the ability to disable one of the lenses and when you do that, you can actually use this camera as an action camera, meaning that wherever you point towards, that's where the camera will shoot. So it's not longer a 360 camera, it's just a regular camera which uses just one of the lenses. And it doesn't have to be this lens, for example, it can be this one. So you have the control which lens you want to use. For example, if it's a more dangerous sport and you don't want to have the camera here on your chest or on your helmet, for example, you want to protect the display, you can use this camera and keep this closer to your body so you don't get uh, the display scratched, for example, which is a really cool thing that I found out accidentally. I, I was, in the beginning, I was thinking it's just the front lens, but it doesn't have to be that way. So uh, if you want, you can use it like this. I, I used it like this on a chest mount to shoot a couple of uh, minutes of motorcycle content for you guys so you can check out how the camera shoots in this um, action uh, mode and keep in mind you have all sorts of different ways to shoot with this camera meaning that you have different aspect ratios you have different resolutions you have built-in stabilization or you can uh, later put that stabilization if you use insta360 studio which is their desktop app so it's really up to you which way you want to go with this and you have different FOV options like maximum FOV, you have ultra, you have linear, you have all sorts of different FOV options depending on what type of look you're going for. Personally, I prefer the widest possible so you can see most, uh, the most amount of uh, area inside the footage, but some people prefer to keep it a little bit tight, keep it a little bit more focused on, an, on a specific area. 
which is great too, depending on your needs, you can really change and, and use whatever you like. I think this feature is great because for some shots, you need to have an action camera if you want to, to shoot those first person view shots, for example. And now you don't need an action camera if you already have this, you can multi-purpose it for both 360 video and for action camera uh, video uh, by using this action single lens uh, mode which I really like once again. I have to say one mode that I'm not really a fan of is the active HDR. I know some people really like the look of HDR, but personally it looks a little bit fake to me. Uh, some parts of the video are just too well exposed, too, too bright and in places where you need to have darker shadows, they are way too bright. So I'm not really a big fan of that. And also the colors seemed a little bit off. Uh, personally, I'm not a huge fan of HDR, so that's just me, my personal preference. Some people really like the look of HDR, so whatever floats your boat. But personally, I probably won't be using HDR on this camera too much. And there are a couple of other features that I just didn't have the time to try out for this video, but I will try them out for my update video coming later this year for this camera. And one of them is the 8K time-lapse, which is a 360 time-lapse, which really sounds like something impressive, but I just need to find that amazing location where a time lapse would be justified. There's also 4K 120 frames per second bullet time mode. You know, bullet time, those really weird looking uh, types of shots where you rotate the camera over your head and you have a 360 view of everything that's going on around you. Now, this has been upgraded to 4K, so the quality will be much better compared to the 1080p, which we had before. And overall, I think this is a great upgrade for anyone coming from the One X or One X2 to this camera. I personally believe the smoothness, the efficiency of this camera, the battery life was amazing, by the way. I forgot to mention that I was shooting all day with this camera and I didn't even deplete the battery uh, completely, which is great. Uh, but just the efficiency, the smoothness of the UI, the new haptic feedback, all the different resolutions, the new action uh, mode that uses just the single lens uh, from the camera, the me mode, which completely keeps you in the middle of the shot without having to reframe your shot uh, yourself and does that automatically for you. All of these little features and improvements of this new X3 camera make it a really, really good product in my opinion. It's priced at $449 if I'm not mistaken. So $450, let's just say, uh, and it's available now. I will link it in the description. If you want to buy one of these, feel free to check out the link in the description. But I have to say I'm a big fan of that. When it comes to 360 video, people either love it or hate it. There's almost no people in between. But for me personally, I'm definitely one of those people who loves 360 video. I think it has a lot of potential for incredible footage that otherwise wouldn't be possible. And I'm glad to be able to record some really interesting shots with this camera uh, that you guys have seen uh, up until this point. I hope you enjoyed them. If you did, please let me know down in the comments below. Let me know what do you think about the X3? Are you going to get one? What do you think about 360 video in general? I'll be down in the comments replying to you guys, at least for the first couple of hours after this video goes live. So please let me know what do you think. Uh, but with that being said, I want to thank you for watching. This is Mike from Drone Supremacy. Take care, everyone, and I'll catch you in the next one. Ciao.